hello everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us at Lightbox Expo and we have a very exciting talk with various programmers and uh, uh, leaders at different festivals from around the world. So uh, one of the things that we're passionate about at Latinx Animation is just the, the, the wealth of groundbreaking animation festivals that are doing a lot of work to uh, push up the next voices in the animation industry. And uh, in this conversation, we're hoping to kind of tackle what uh, people are looking for uh, when uh, applying to these festivals and seeing you know, how people can learn more about how to get their animation shorts into film festivals as well. So uh, just to kick it off, we're gonna start with uh, Alejandro here to introduce yourself. And this panel is gonna be in English and Spanish uh, for everyone uh, since we're from different locations and whoever's comfortable to, to answer. So Alejandro, uh, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, where you work at, at, for the festival. Okay. Well, my name is Alejandro Gonzalez. I'm the artistic director of the Cordoba International Animation Festival, which we call Anima for short. Um, and I'm located in Cordoba, Argentina. Amazing, thank you. And uh, Stephanie, uh, can you uh, introduce yourself? Tell us uh, what you do and where you work. Yeah, for sure. Um, thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm Stephanie Barrington. I am the Director of Industry Programming and Partnerships at the Ottawa International Animation Festival. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Awesome, thank you. Uh, y Margarita, puedes, uh, te puedes introducir, uh, si nos un poco de qué trabajo estás haciendo con uh, tu festival. Ok, gracias. Soy Margarita Cid, directora del Festival Internacional Chile Monos y directora del Mercado MAI. Eh, soy yo, chi, mujer, <risa> chi, soy chi. Eh, eh, y dirijo ambas instancias, además de una red de cineclubes a nivel latinoamericano que se llama Mono Club. Muy bien, gracias. Uh, we can keep keep it here with Margarita, but the first question I really want to uh, kind of cover is like, tell us a little bit more about your festival. Like what makes it unique as an animation festival? Uh, and who does your community involve? Like uh, where are you located and how does that kind of make uh, your, your programming special in a unique way from uh, your viewpoint in this industry? Entonces uh, Margarita, pues, hicimos un poco de Chilimonas del Festival que lo hace un poco único y, y, y quién incluye en tu comunidad también. Mm, mm. Eh, Chile Monos cumplió 10 años este año. Eh, es un festival hoy día el único calificador para los eh, premios de la academia en la categoría cortometraje latinoamericano. Es una ventana de difusión para el, el, todo el territorio latinoamericano. Ese es su, su centro, ese es su principal eh, objetivo, difundir la animación y originalmente nació como un festival eh, profesionalizante y eh, a los cuatro años lo que quisimos fue la masividad y que fuera conocido y que fuera parte de, de la agenda cultural no solo nacional en Chile sino en Latinoamérica y hoy día lo que buscamos es eh, ser el festival en español más grande del mundo eh, y potenciar el idioma español como una lengua que abarca todo nuestro territorio. Quizás por eso a mí no me gusta hablar mucho en inglés, aunque entiendo harto y podría hablar, pero para mí hablar en español es algo que va como con la línea que tiene el festival eh, Chile Monos. Y lo que hoy día hemos logrado en 10 años es una comunidad que reúne a los profesionales, tanto realizadores como los productores ejecutivos, la cadena completa de lo que es la industria de la animación, pero además eh, una red enorme de universidades que enseñan animación y que han conformado una red de cineclubes universitarios en las cuales incorporamos a los estudiantes y que se van eh, de una forma gradual siendo parte de lo que es el universo de la animación y también eh, trabajamos con la audiencia general 
que es la audiencia a la cual el contenido que nosotros como realizadores eh, producimos, esperamos que lo reciban. Y ahí potenciamos grandemente lo que es la producción latinoamericana, tanto de largometrajes, de series y de cortos, para que Latinoamérica se acostumbre a ver eh, el tipo de animación que se hace, la temática y la forma en que se aborda de acuerdo a lo que se puede hacer en Latinoamérica. Gracias, sí, eso es, uh, uh, muchas felicidades de tener tu aniversario también este año de Chile Monos, uh, aunque no pudimos tenerlo en persona, también era espectacu espectacular ver toda la programación que ustedes uh, unieron este, este año, entonces in, uh, yo vi muchos de los cortos, uh, como tú sabes, mm -hmm. pero fue... Uh, todos los cortos de todas partes del mundo fue espectacular. Uh, gracias, Margarita. Um, I'm going to kick it over to Stephanie. Uh, so, Stephanie, uh, tell us a little bit about Ottawa, uh, Ottawa Festival. Uh, what makes it unique and uh, who does your community include? Totally. So, I'll start off by saying we're the largest animation festival in North America. Um, and we're definitely um, kind of an industry hub. We have a whole industry. Um, side of programming and professional development stream as well. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but I also want to add that we're an Oscar qualifying film event. So for a lot of folks, we're known, um, especially for our short film competitions. Um, it's like very prestigious to get your film selected into our short film competitions and the grand prize winner um, from our short film comps um, is Oscar eligible. Um, so that's kind of, we're quite well known in the like indie filmmaking world. Um, because of that. And then to jump into the kind of professional development side of stuff, we have, um, we actually have like quite a diverse um, audience pool. So we have on one side of things, we have the kind of industry heavy stuff. So um, we run the animation conference. So TAC is what it's called. And that's um, the industry networking um, hub. It's the first three days of the festival, usually the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we bring in executives, um, buyers, um, acquisitions folks from um, LA and all over the world um, who are looking for new content. And we have um, some like pitching opportunities that tie in as well as networking events and kind of those industry heavy type conversations. Um, so that's one thing that we do, but we also have a lot of um, kind of professional development programming geared at more emerging folks and particularly students. Um, And that's actually one thing we noticed with the online edition last year is that we were able to reach so many more students because it's often like a travel is a huge barrier, um, especially, you know, we all know we've been students, you know, you don't have a ton of money, especially for travel and that kind of stuff. So it was great to have like so many more students kind of zooming in from all over the world last year. Um, but so that's a big part of our professional development programming as well, really catering to those student type folks. We have um, what we call the animation expose fair. So that's like the, the kind of recruiting hub. Um, a lot of uh, recruiters in LA and across, um, across the continent really use Ottawa as a kind of recruiting hub um, because we, we have a lot of students and a lot of new talent um, that they can access through the festival. So um, definitely a lot of um, kind of hiring and that's something we take very seriously on our programming and as well as like facilitating those connections between the recruiters and the artists. So we have this year, um, we have the artist gallery. So it's an online directory with a bunch of different artist profiles. So when folks buy their passes, uh, passes are on sale now, by the way, uh, for the <laughs> festival next month. Uh, <laughs> when they buy their passes, they'll have the opportunity to submit their portfolio and um, kind of some profile information to be featured in the artist gallery. And the artist gallery will be used by recruiters um, uh, in their search for new, for new hires. So that's another element of kind of the professional development side of things. We also have, um, one thing I'll mention, we also have um, programming for kids and teens. And so This is something that's important to us and something that we've really kind of tried to develop with the online situation because um, we can reach um, families and classrooms across Canada. So um, we're building kind of a package of teacher resources, both at the elementary level and the high school level, so that teachers can kind of incorporate some, even teachers who don't have any animation knowledge themselves can incorporate some of our programming into their, um, into their classrooms this fall. So that's kind of an exciting new thing. 
all of our kids and teen programming is free. Um, and that's something that we're kind of very proud of is um, yeah, offering that kind of stuff for free for families and kids. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's an overview, yeah. And, and just a quick question for the people that are interested in those portfolio reviews type of programming during the industry week, as well as like the art, uh, artist alley, is that open to anyone around the world or is it just open to uh, students in Canada? Great question. Open to anyone around the world. Um, and they don't have to be students or emerging folks. We also um, can are happy to feature kind of mid-career and more established folks in the artist gallery. And I'll also add, though speaking of students, um, we partnered with Netflix Animation to offer a heavily subsidized um, student pass. So students can um, attend the festival for $30 Canadian. So it's quite affordable. Yes, very, very affordable. Uh, I, I also just want to say as well uh, that just this transition to virtual uh, programming for a lot of the major festivals uh, has been, for me as a film festival fan, just uh, spectacular because I get, I get to watch all this programming that I normally probably wouldn't have seen. And I feel like a lot of other people feel the same way. So it'll be interesting next year, I would say, I guess, uh, when things return a little bit to normal, how uh, festivals continue to build their, I guess, their their base of like how many people will be attending. So, uh, so uh, let's move over to Alejandro. Alejandro, can you tell us uh, about yourself and a little bit more about Anima Festival as well and what makes it unique and who does your community include? All right. Well, our festival started 20 years ago. Actually, we're getting to, we're getting 20. <laughs> we're getting, we're of age actually. And uh, when we started the festival, it was, um, because we needed to find a place to get together, to gather, because we, uh, in, by we, I mean animators in um, Argentina and in Cordoba in particular, we did not know, we did not have many uh, links with other people in the Argentina. So we started the festival as a place to get together and share animation. And um, I think, well, in the last 20 years, we've had uh, this is going to be our 11th edition because the festival takes place every two years. But I think in these years, we've been a, a place of reunion for animators in all of Latin America. And uh, I, I like to think of our festival as, a, as an animator's spa or something like that, somewhere where you can get together with people who is in the in the in your same wavelength, where you can share, where you can learn. Our festival is produced by a couple of state universities in Argentina. So from the very beginning, we've tried to to offer to our community uh, what something to learn about animation. We wanted our community to learn about. Uh, this animation that you won't see on TV probably or on the movie theater, this kind of more independent animation. We also screen quite a lot and one of our festival programs is specific, sorry, this is specifically uh, commissioned animation. You have to forgive me for my English. I like speaking in English because I practice, but no, maybe I'm speaking so terribly. <laughs> but, so edit everything you want. But uh, we do have our festival program uh, mixes both artistic independent animation, what you call independent animation in the US or North America, because uh, in Argentina, it is most, and Latin America, uh, short and films animation is mostly all independent. Um, and we also add feature animations and we screen uh, commissioned animation, TV series, TV specials. So we, uh, on the last edition and on this edition, we will also screen VR, uh, video games. So we're open to all kinds of animation, but we are also, but we are always uh, looking for the the art, the artsy part of it. And uh, our festival, being produced by the universities, also holds an academic forum, a conference, uh, which is the only conference in Spanish, uh, and we've been holding it since two thousand and seven. So we do lead, and this is a a, a real decision from the festival. We do leave the market, the market side of the animation in the animation industry 
to those who know how to do it, like Chilemonos, right? Because we do know how to enjoy, how to share. We, you won't find many people uh, selling uh, TV programs or pitching because we, that's not what we do, but you will find people who you can do later on a pitch at Chilemonos, for instance. Awesome, thank you. And, and I think that's a, an important distinction to have is not every film festival around the world and specifically animation has a, as a conference component or even a market component. And I think that's something in, um, that is becoming a lot more common uh, at the bigger festivals, but also in locations like South America as well, a lot of the animation festivals, they're starting to transition because into including that programming because uh, it gives a lot more opportunities to produce our own stories, especially in those countries as well, where uh, I guess a lot of programming is the bigger programming, the bigger budget projects are imported from other countries, you know. Um, so uh, Alejandro, we'll, let's keep it with you in this next question, but what's an underappreciated or underrecognized resource that you think most people don't know about animation festivals or your, your more specifically uh, your festival as well? Yeah, well, I would think that um, in all festivals, but specifically in animation festivals, the most important things never happen at the screening room. They happen at the cafe, <laughs> at the cafeteria, some bar nearby, uh, because that's where you connect, you know? And um, there are animation festivals that are huge, and there are animation festivals that are more boutique. And uh, well, I think that's one of the things that many people don't really know because when sometimes you go to an animation festival or to a festival, you have like this huge strict agenda and you leave very few opportunities to, to informal conversation with people. Uh, you know, I've met more interesting people at the line waiting to enter a screening that, than at the screening room itself. Because there are no divas in animation, actually. You, compared to live action, we, there are no divas and you can easily connect with anybody in the animation. I think we are like one animator away from another animator anywhere in the world. So uh, I think it's important to know that, you know, and that animation festivals really, really, really do make a very important place for short films. Whereas live action, live, live action festivals, they mostly focus on the feature, right? So I think that's something that many people don't really know. I, I agree a lot with what you were saying about, uh, I guess the networking aspect and the networking can happen anywhere, uh, mm -hmm. especially at film festivals. And that's always like the greatest part is walking out of like a really great short program screening and then everyone just gathering out, gathering around in the lobby, talking about what they just watched. I think that's some of the little aspects that I feel a lot of people miss in this uh, kind of virtual uh, world that we are right now. Um, so hopefully, you know, uh, once we return to more in-person programming, uh, we can get more of those like interactions as well. So thank you. Uh, Stephanie, uh, bringing it over to you as well, like what's an underappreciated or underrecognized resource that yeah, you think most people don't know about animation festivals, more specifically Ottawa? Yeah, um, I just want to echo what Alejandro said, and I love what he said earlier about the reunion element of the, of the animation festival and this like that idea of like bringing folks together once a year everyone gathers and it's this place where it's exciting and people are sharing ideas and they're reconnecting and they're catching up and it's like that energy is like really magical and I think that that's one thing I will say that's one thing that's really hard to replicate in the online uh, version of the festival is just that exactly like you said Alejandro that uh, when you're standing in line to get into the cinema and you bump into someone you met like two years ago and it's like oh hey it's you again like that stuff you can't really do online it has to be so much more intentional online so definitely I would say attending festivals and taking advantage of the fact that you're in close proximity to all of these like business and creative minds. Um, yeah, and um, I will also add because um, the animation industry is very um, necessarily collaborative, like we have how many artists working on films um, and because we, see ourselves as a place where folks can come and get hired 
and recruiters attend. And that's one thing we kind of pride ourselves on being is a space for people to get jobs. Um, it's also an opportunity for people to make those network connections that will then potentially turn into more gigs further down the line, like that kind of element of building your roster of connections, people who will go into a studio and be like, oh, I know this person um, that I met at Ottawa a couple of years ago. Uh, they'd be great for this gig. Like, you know, that kind of stuff is, is um, I think, really valuable. Um, and that happens in the festival space. That's great. Uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, one thing I, I also wanted to to include is like Ottawa also includes those portfolio reviews too. And I think that, um, you know, from what I've seen in the past, that every festival does that. Um, so I think that's a, a great aspect as well from uh, from uh, underappreciated stuff that I don't know students feel very appreciated about that. Um, uh, Margarita, uh, la misma pregunta para ti también es, ¿qué es algo que que nos uh, que gente no sabe mucho de de un aspecto del festival que tú crees que es algo que es especial y y algo que la mayoría debe de saber del festival como Che y Monos. Eh, yo creo que una de las cosas más importantes que uno extraña de la presencialidad es exactamente la cercanía de las personas y Chile en Monos está creado bajo ese concepto y aquellos que han venido como Alejandro eh, sabe que el hotel está a 50 metros del centro cultural más grande de Santiago que es el GAM, Gabriela Mistral y a 100 metros del museo donde se desarrolla el área de mercado y a 20 metros de los, los restaurantes, las cafeterías eh, los grandes eh, plazas eh, para nosotros, cuando decidimos que Chile Monos tenía que tener un área de mercado y que fuera en paralelo, el objetivo fue que los realizadores y los productores ejecutivos pudieran tener eh, un diálogo más cercano y pudiera existir una oportunidad de potenciar eh, otros formatos más allá de lo que ha sido históricamente posible en Latinoamérica, que es el cortometraje. Y nos ha ocurrido en los últimos tres años que las series, las series latinoamericanas, han irrumpido de una forma impresionante, y yo creo que va unido a, a posibilitar que eh, la producción latinoamericana hoy día sea en coproducción, y eso ha sido parte de uno de los trabajos más fuertes que ha hecho Mai, de hacer que tres productoras se reúnan, dos productoras se reúnan, y hoy día hay series como Petit o Puerto Papel, que está Brasil, Colombia, Argentina, Chile, eh, reunidos produciendo y reunidos exhibiendo en la televisión abierta. Eh, yo creo que unir eh, un festival con un área de industria en el caso de Latinoamérica es importantísimo y eso fue una decisión inicial en Chile Monos y hoy día después de 10 años es el mercado de animación en la cual se, se conocen los proyectos, en la cual Chile Monos es solo de animación. Es, eh, no, no es un festival donde haya videojuego o donde hayan otras áreas del audiovisual, sino que es un festival y mercado específico de animación. Así que todos los que participan son distintas áreas de la animación, ya sean artistas conceptuales, animadores, directores, productores, gente que hace sonido, pero es en animación. Y eso ha permitido eh, que el festival crezca como un espacio en la cual eh, primeramente es gratuito ingresar al mercado y al festival. Todas las actividades son gratuitas para estudiantes, profesionales, realizadores, productores, ejecutivos. Es para todos gratuito. Entonces eh, la posibilidad de las personas de participar es algo que va ligado al portafolio 
o a la propuesta que tengan de mercado para ser parte de algunos de los espacios de animación. Eh, la virtualidad eh, indudablemente hizo que todo creciera y pudiéramos llegar a lugares como en Costa Rica, que es al otro lado de, o sea, es Centroamérica, y que hoy día esté tan conectado con Chile Monos como Córdoba, que está al lado de nosotros y hemos sido aliados por décadas, pero hoy día eh, la virtualidad que, que permitió que nos uniéramos con gente en Panamá, en Guatemala, en, no sé, en, en Puerto Rico, eh, ha hecho crecer la comunidad latinoamericana y las posibilidades de conectarse. Tuvimos 220 estudios de animación latinoamericanos en el mercado. No 220 personas, 220 estudios, estudios con sus representantes, lo cual es la, la, el, el evento que ha concretado la mayor cantidad de eh, representantes buscando unirse entre ellos y unirse a um, eh, estos 220 estudios pudieron juntarse entre ellos como también con los representantes para Latinoamérica de las grandes eh, cadenas de televisión, como distribuidores de televisión, como partiendo Netflix, Discovery, Disney, Paca Paca en Argentina, que es muy importante para Latinoamérica, TVN en Chile, Globe de Brasil, Señal Colombia en, en Colombia, importantes eh, ventanas de distribución y de conexión para Latinoamérica. Esperamos que eh, el 2022 va a ser híbrido, híbrido, mixto, porque eh, lo presencial lo necesitamos como latinoamericanos, necesitamos eh, sentirnos, pero lo virtual amplió el territorio lo virtual incorporó lugares que hubiera sido imposible llegar. Así que yo creo que, como dijo Alejandro, eh, cada festival tiene un sello y una, y, un, y una impronta, que el del Alejandro es como la parte académica, es como un bastión importantísimo en español para Latinoamérica, donde se genera conocimiento, se genera papers, se genera... Eh, historia, historia, eh, y nos hemos ido todos vinculando para hacer que la animación tenga distintas formas de manifestarse. Chile Monos tiene esto que junta al ámbito universitario, al profesional, al de industria, y es una comunidad abierta, y trabajamos para seguir eh, permitiendo que siga siendo abierta, que sea un lugar donde se reúnen los estudiantes, los profesionales, eh, lo que les gusta la animación, la familia en general. Gracias. No, eso, uh, uh, tengo, tengo que decir que eso es algo tan importante de todos esos aspectos porque el virtual ha cambiado como estamos inter, uh, interacting, uh, speak Spanish a little bit, but uh, interacting with other, you know, um, uh, you know, ways, avenues of, uh, uh, of selling your projects. And I think mm. that's what's changed a lot in the, in this festival, uh, aspect that were virtual is that, you know, a lot of people are watching projects that they, that they wouldn't have seen before, which is great. Um, for this next question, I'm going to switch it up a bit and, um, uh, and, and, uh, kick it over to Stephanie first is, you know, a lot of, uh, programming is hard for festivals. Um, One, because you're getting so many submissions uh, on a yearly basis, so many great films, and you wish you could include them all in the program. And it's impossible because there's only so much time <laughs> in these programming and these programs that, you, uh, that we create. But uh, for people that are interested in applying uh, next year for Ottawa, uh, what is a, a, a piece of advice that you would like to offer them when submitting either their short films or their feature length films? um for for the festival is there anything in particular that Ottawa is looking for or or something that that really is like the fundamental basis of the programming aspect for you guys 
Yeah, good question. Um, I'm not on the kind of artistic programming side of things. I focus mostly on the industry uh, programming side of things. But I will say we um, we get a lot of submissions. Um, this year was record breaking. Actually, we got 2,500 um, film submissions. So it was a big job for our programming team to go through them all. Um, in terms of advice, well, actually, I'll also add, so we don't charge an entry fee. I know a lot of festivals do charge an entry fee, um, a submission fee, and that's something we have talked about because, you know, so much of our programming time is spent going through all the submissions, but it's something that we feel strongly about is like really keeping it as accessible as possible. So um, we don't charge an entry fee. Um, in terms of advice, we're interested in weird stuff like if you're like worried your project is too weird or like you know too out there send it to us we like weird we like stuff that is like that you know other people are like what is going on <laughs> so i would embrace it feel free to be like kind of a weirdo and send us your weird project with your weird synopsis and like we will take it seriously our artistic director, Chris Robinson, watches every single submission, all 2,500 that come in every year. So feel free to be creative and don't feel like you need to fit a certain festival mold or something like that with us. We're very open to um, things that maybe, you know, other festivals might overlook. So I'll say that. Absolutely. And 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 that is a, a great to hear about the, the submission fees being uh, free, especially for, because you know, if someone has a project, you know, these festival submission fees add up very quickly, totally. you know, and it's not a guarantee you're going to get selected. So like you can easily spend up to a thousand dollars submitting to at least 20 to 30 film festivals. Yeah. Um, and it adds up very quickly. And, it, and, it, and it's something that people when producing their projects, a lot of especially animation is independent. So like people are making these films on their own time with no budgets or money. It's all completely are an artistically driven uh, idea and then they get to like oh I want I want people to connect with it and they're like oh my god I have to spend this just money like it, yeah it adds up so it's really great to hear about uh, about that as well for Ottawa uh, mm -hmm. thank you uh, Alejandro uh, same question to you um, what is something um, you mentioned like your uh, I guess a biannual uh, fest film festival for animation but what is something that you guys are looking for uh in programming the festival for either short films or feature films uh how, how you know what are you guys looking for for submissions and how does submission work for you yeah well uh first of all i want to say that our festival is so so free does not uh, have an entry fee so you may submit and that is uh now that we are talking about that uh when we started we also for instance, being in Argentina and being an independent animator, sometimes our animations were made not even in 16 millimeters 20 years ago, but maybe VHS or SVHS, Betamax, Betacam, whatever, any many other formats that were not appropriate. Margarita knows what I'm talking about because she's laughing now, uh, but they were not accepted at animation festivals. So you have yeah. to submit a 16 millimeter copy, a 35 millimeter copy, and there were many, many, many wonderful animations that were being produced in Latin America that they will never make it to those festivals. So we, from the very beginning, started to receive every format. So we don't care if it's, we, we will screen 35 millimeters and then a VHS. But that's the best a copy that the filmmaker could have, then we will screen it. Um, as for the what we are looking for when we receive the entries, well, we do receive like a huge amount of entries too. I think all of us are over the 2,500 uh, mark. Uh, <laughs> yes. And we do watch every single uh, entry that we receive. Um, sometimes when people are not selected for the festival, they send, emails or comments uh why why was i not selected what happened what's what should i do and it's actually there are many many beautiful things that are left out of the program because every festival has uh 
it's like, you know, it's like cooking a menu. So every festival offers different menus. So some animations go with some other animations and you can, uh, you can make a, a beautiful dish to make it to, to, for you to enjoy. So what I look for when selecting animations for a festival is really a voice, an, an animator, an, a product, a, an animation that has a specific voice that I have not seen before. So that can be uh, in anything, in, in, in any aspect of the animation. It can be in the narrative, it could be the visuals, it could be the, the work in the soundtrack. And so what we are not looking for is what probably animation schools teach a lot, uh, the cute character, all the squash and stress, stretch, all, the, all those things that you have to do when you're learning animation, but we want you to give us something different, something that after watching your animation makes me remember it a couple of hours later. You know, something, this animation that, well, there's something about this animation that I don't know, it's, I have to put it in the program because uh, there is something in there. It's kind of hard to, to explain, and for me it's harder in English, but the thing is there is no specific recipe to submit to a festival and get that film accepted. The film has to resonate in the, the, the very specific festival. So what is good for our festival, maybe it's not good for Ottawa and vice versa. So that's why you should submit to as many animation festivals as possible because First of all, there are many. And second, every festival will uh, look for something different. This and, if I may add, some festivals also do have some sort of, uh, uh, do, well, this is kind of tough, but some festivals do receive sponsorship from specific entities. And sometimes those entities, those institutions suggest what to include. Yeah, it's not a, maybe privately or from the state, but in some festivals, you, uh, your, fest, your animation may not be included because there is a quota for animations that are not from a specific country or from a specific group of countries or something like that. I'm not making many, many friends with this, but. <laughs> no, no, I, I think you're making a, a lot of sense because it, it is something very important. And I think that was something that Stephanie was also touching upon that it is uh, when, you know, people think that, that they have to create a specific type of animated short or tell a specific type of story to get into uh, a festival. And it's not, it's, it's really like, this is an opportunity to tell your story, that to, to hear your voice and your perspective. And I think that sometimes gets a little bit lost um, when people are just trying to create something that maybe we've already seen before. You know, we're, and I think for these type of programs at Ottawa and Chilemonos and other, other, other places that watching a shorts program with like shorts that are just, Kind of mind blowing. It's like you just walk out of those screenings, just like, like rejuvenated and inspired. And I think that's uh, very important. So thank, thank you, Alejandro. Margarita, también la misma pregunta de gente que está interesado a el próximo año para Chile Monos, si tienen largometrajes o cortometrajes, qué es un aspecto de la programación que ustedes están buscando cuando están viendo todos estos uh, sumi, uh, submissions. Es, es muy similar a lo que comenta Alejandro. Uno recibe, uno recibe eh, una cantidad impresionante de, de obras. Este, este año que pasó para nosotros fue particularmente interesante. Llegaron 3.300 trabajos de animación. Eh, revisar 3.300 es mucho trabajo, mucho trabajo, y finalmente lo que se exhiben son 110, de 3.300 exhibimos solo 110, así que calificar es muy complejo, eh, 
con respecto a, lo, a los formatos, yo no, no existe una, una línea, como dice Alejandro, que, que uno dijera, hay menú para todos. Tiene que ver con el tipo de, de producción que va llegando y que va marcando eh, ciertas... Eh, no necesariamente son tendencias en la animación, pero los últimos tres años a Chile Monos ha llegado eh, mucho cortometraje que tiene una voz, de, una voz política muy fuerte, una voz de representar eh, las circunstancias sociales de Latinoamérica, ha ingresado muy fuerte eh, una Es más, el cortometraje que ganó este año, eh, cortometraje latinoamericano, es el cortometraje más visto en la historia de la plataforma. Nosotros trabajamos con Onda Media, que es una plataforma en la cual está toda la programación. Tuvimos en, en esta oportunidad 14.000 visualizaciones, las cuales impensable si estuviéramos haciéndolo en salas presenciales, cuando una sala tiene capacidad... 300, 300 butacas, tener 14.000 personas viendo algo es algo impresionante, es algo que la virtualidad permitió eh, que la gente eh, aprecie la curatoría que hay en Chile Monos. El cortometraje que ganó tuvo 2.300 reproducciones, o sea, un solo cortometraje fue visto 2.300 veces el ganador, que se llama Bestia, y... Y sin lugar a un cortometraje chileno de Hugo Covarrubias y que va a dar que hablar en Latinoamérica y en el mundo. Y sin lugar a dudas para nosotros que haya ganado, habla de que eh, cada año los cortometrajes que llegan no, no son clasificados según una, un parámetro que Chile Monos dictamine tanto para largos como para series o cortometrajes, sino que tiene que ver con el contexto de lo que se recibe y después se hace la curatoría y después eh, un jurado elige finalmente. Nosotros este año tuvimos el orgullo de tener el primer jurado paritario a nivel de animación en Chile Monos. Fue muy complejo, muy, muy complejo. Eh, porque la, la forma de enfrentar la programación, dependiendo de, de qué país uno tenga su, su mirada de la animación, o desde cuál es su... su quizás si, si fueron hombres, si fueron mujeres, o, o si tienen rangos etarios los jurados distintos, es complejo, eh, es complejo organizar los jurados, y, y este año fue un año particularmente interesante, el cual tuvo el placer de, de presidirlo y, y ver lo que está ocurriendo en Latinoamérica en términos de qué es lo que estamos viendo en animación o a qué podemos acceder a través de los festivales. Y yo creo que esa es una labor que los festivales eh, tienen que potenciar para que la gente, no solo los que son animadores, vean la muestra curatoriada, sino que los estudiantes, sino que los alumnos de colegios, los adultos, porque el vehículo de la animación lleva un contenido que uno muchas veces no lo ve en el live action ni en el documental, y la animación eh, permite que eh, de una forma eh, inesperada para muchas personas tenga una incorporación de temas que no han sido, eh, no han sido eh, incorporados en live action o documental. Yo creo que estos últimos tres años han sido muy importantes con cortometrajes como, como Tío en México, o como eh, Bestia que decía yo, o los que han llegado de Argentina, no me recuerdo el último que llegamos, que era muy muy bueno, eh, de, de Nuria Menchaca en, en México, yo creo que se incorporan temas a través de la animación y eso por mucho que uno diga tienes una cierta línea de festival sobrepasa las curatorías y sobrepasa eh, los sellos de muchos festivales, es lo que proponen los realizadores y que de un minuto a otro empiezan a llegar y tú tienes que ser parte de 
la forma de exhibición y la forma que el público logre eh, apreciarlo. Para nosotros la valorización y ser una ventana de lo que la gente quiere expresar, quiere eh, difundir, es una de las labores más importantes de cualquier festival. Gracias, y eso también es algo, un aspecto que, que gente también, que hay temas también cuando están viendo todos estos uh, cortometrajes o largometrajes, que hay temas para los programas también, cuando estás viendo diferentes estilos de animación que pueden, se pueden juntar a un programa para la gente, pero también oyendo cuánta, cuánta gente vio ese eh, bestia de, eh, por una for formata virtual es increíble también. Um, uh, I want to switch it over because we're, you know, we're coming towards the end of the talk. Um, and I know that uh, Ottawa and Anima Festival are later this year. So uh, I want to give you guys an opportunity to talk about like what's something that uh, people that are interested in attending should, uh, what's one tip that you would give them to really take advantage of, of the festival this year? Um, so uh, Stephanie, if you want to talk a little bit about Ottawa. Yeah, for sure. Um, one tip I would offer is attend everything as much as possible. Um, a lot of, you know, time and thought and effort went into creating this programming to be as engaging um, and productive for our audience as possible. Um, and this also, I would also extend this to an in-person festival. So for 2022, hopefully when we're back in person, <laughs> attend as much as possible. And on a little side note about that, I know it's tempting when you're like, you know, you're traveling to an international film festival. Often it's like in a different country that you aren't necessarily living in. It's really tempting to like try and do some tourist stuff in between programs. Save the tourist stuff for after or before. Try and give yourself that extra time and just like soak in all of the programming because it's always jam packed. It can be a bit overwhelming, but we always factor in things like networking events. This year we're doing, um, um, what we're calling Camp OIAF. Um, and this is uh, in partnership with Cartoon Network Studios. We're having like a virtual space um, that'll be open for most of the festival. So folks can just casually pop in. There's drawing sessions at these kind of virtual tables. So it'll look kind of like this. It'll be, it we won't be using Zoom, but it'll be like kind of a Zoom-like space where you can video conference with other people and you can draw together and you can chat and you can reflect on you know, the screens that you went to or the talk that just happened, that kind of stuff. So we really try and create those kind of casual networking opportunities, um, even in the online space. Um, so take advantage. This is your opportunity to connect with other, you know, people who work in animation or love animation. Um, I, make time for it. I know it's hard. We're all sick of sitting in front of our screens all day long. <laughs> I'm sick of it too. <laughs> but these are really, this is a really valuable opportunity and like creep people, check out other people's profiles, um, send them chats, like don't be intimidated. This is exactly what it's here for. This is for you to network and make those connections. So don't, shop, don't be shy, put yourself out there. We're all doing it. We're all putting ourselves out there. Take advantage of the opportunity. That's what I would say. Amazing, yeah. And I think uh, one thing that people know, don't know if they're not in the animation industry is everyone's super friendly, you know, I think you know, we're, it's already hard to make animation and we're always trying to help each other. So I think, yeah, don't be shy. Like people talk are to. always willing to talk and offer some perspective. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Alejandro, uh, same question to you for Anima Festival. Uh, what is uh, something, uh, a tip or something that you would like to encourage for people to take advantage of for the upcoming festival? You know what, um, I think, everybody should do at our festival. We have a, a, a specific part of the, of the festival called Anima Kucha, which is like an open microphone. So I urge you to grab that microphone, which is like, I don't know how it's gonna work out because with Zoom and Meet and everything, I don't know, but it's gonna be a, a specific place where you can share what you're doing right now. I mean, I'm working on this project and uh, this guy is helping me with this. You can 
what I want you to, to take advantage of the festival, besides the, the competition screenings and the panorama screenings, which are, are beautiful, I have been wonderfully curated and it's a lot of work. Uh, also try to uh, take advantage of those instances that are gonna be synchronous Syn or synchronic. I don't know how to say it in English. They, they are happening at the same time that you are yeah. there that are not probably gonna be the same fun if you watch it recorded afterwards. Because we are kind of fed up with recording things like this actually when we don't have a, a Q&A space later on. So try to take advantage of that. We are trying to do as many synchronous activities as we can, as we possibly can. Uh, so I think it's gonna be really interesting. And uh, the other thing that's wonderful is what Margarita actually said. Uh, there are there, the people in Costa Rica, people in Panama, people in Mexico are right there on the other side of my screen. So it's a wonderful opportunity to get together in your language. Amazing. Yes, and uh, I also agree that uh, I can't wait to get back in person because uh, yeah, we've been doing this far too long and it would be great to see all of you guys in person and you know, grab a coffee like you were saying and you know, go to one of the networking spaces and just get to like talk and you know, talk about the films at the programming and, and the festival as well. So. I am looking forward to when we go back to normal. Uh, and uh, and then the last question as well, going over to Margarita, same thing is, ¿qué es un aspecto de en uh, en el futuro para para Chilimonos el próximo año que uh, que están trabajando y gente que está interesado a atender Chilimonos? ¿Qué es un aspecto también que quieres uh, uh, dar un uh, recomendar a ellos también? Eh, el 2022 es complejo, muy complejo programar cualquier cosa, cualquier cosa, porque el 2021 pensamos que ya iba a ser presencial, nunca, nunca creímos que iba a seguir siendo online, y el 2022... Eh, para Chile Monos va a ser mixto, va a ser híbrido. Eh, buscamos que la gente vuelva a las salas en Santiago de Chile, la gente pueda disfrutar de los espacios que son sumamente agradables para poder conocerse, hacer networking, eh, para poder eh, ver en pantalla grande eh, los cortometrajes o los largometrajes pero eh, la responsabilidad después de dos años, dos Chile Monos online, dos, dos, eh, no es llegar y decir ya no más, porque por dos años hemos trabajado arduamente, arduamente para eh, resolver, resolver, entender cómo hacer un festival online, que no es poner una cámara, que es, es programar de una manera distinta porque la gente sigue trabajando, sigue en su vida normal y además hay un festival que tú quieres que la gente vaya, que la gente lo disfrute. Tú trabajaste para que la sala del Zoom o del Meet o del Pine esté llena, por lo tanto, eh, el trabajo de programación es muy complejo. Descubrir la zona horaria. Si tú quieres gente desde Los Ángeles, son tres horas hacia atrás. Gente de Córdoba, una hora hacia adelante. Gente en Panamá, tres horas para otro lado. Entonces, coordinar las zonas horarias de manera online es un desafío, es un desafío mayor. Eh, lograr que eh, los contenidos sean eh, entendidos por todos, porque es el mundo abierto, es el mundo abierto al que uno puede llegar, completo, es global. Eh, para nosotros fue muy importante lo que logramos construir, 
modificar los formatos, nosotros comenzamos con formatos tipo entrevista, y, y más, más allá de la masterclass, que interesante, sino que sentar a alguien y como en el living de tu casa, conversar, conversar. Eh, hacer que la pantalla, que es un medio de aprendizaje para los estudiantes de universidad, es un medio de reunión para los empresarios, es el medio afectivo para tu familia en cuarentena, no había otra cosa, y es la misma pantalla del festival, ¿cómo, cómo haces que sea especial? ¿Cómo logras hacer que sea distinto? Distinto. Y yo creo que eh, en dos años uno aprendió muchas cosas, muchas cosas, lo que sí, lo que no, y el 2022 vamos a repetir seguramente lo que sí, eh, volver a lo presencial que es indispensable, indispensable, pero sabemos que eh, va a ser muy difícil que la gente vuelva a las salas, muy difícil, porque hay mucho temor en las salas, eh, y también eh, la gente eh, hoy día aprecia el tiempo de una manera distinta, el tiempo, el trasladarse a un lugar, eh, cuando se va a trasladar, es algo que realmente quiere ver presencial, realmente quiere ir a verlo. Entonces, en la programación de los festivales, el próximo año lo que va a ser presencial es algo imperdible, imperdible estar ahí, eh, trasladarse, sentir que es quizá tu primer ingreso a una sala y apreciar que vas a encontrarte con gente similar, todo va junto, todo va junto, y el 2022 va a tener ese desafío, que lo presencial es lo imprescindible, y lo online es mantener una comunidad que creció y que quiere seguir estando contigo, pero no puede venir de Costa Rica a Chile, no puede venir de Panamá a Chile, es muy lejos, mucho tiempo, mucho dinero. Así que el desafío va a ser doble de tener presencial y tener online y saber definir qué es en cada formato lo que va a ser eh, virtuoso. Virtuoso y va a ser algo eh, esperado por la audiencia de Chilemonos o de Ottawa o de Anima. Ese es un desafío. Gracias, y, y ojalá el próximo año y los años después, cuando volvemos a uh, otra vez en persona, que uh, todo lo que aprendimos estos últimos dos años lo podemos tomar uh, para mejorar los festivales de la conferencia, pero también uh, tener ese aspecto personal con la gente para traerlos. Es, un, es diferente ver una, una programación en la sala con uh, 300 otras personas, porque son una experiencia que vas a tener uh, uh, juntos con ellos. Um, so I want to thank you all uh, again for taking the time to do this talk and that we're going to be here at Lightbox Expo and everyone that has any questions, again, um, feel free to uh, follow these festivals, Ottawa Fest uh, International Animation Festival, uh, Anima Festival in Argentina, and Chile Monos in Chile as well, because um, this is only a uh, three of the many other festivals from around the world, but they're all doing amazing work putting forward uh, the art and the industry of animation in their respective countries and, and in specific locations as well. So again, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, Alejandro and Stephanie, good luck at the upcoming festivals. <laughs> I know you guys are busy, so good <laughs> luck. And Margarita, we look forward to 2022 with Chile Monos as well. So again, thank okay. you so much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yes. this was fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <Oops. laughs> Thank you. Take All care. Right.